Welcome everyone, this is Talks with Kenny here today. We're reacting to a video of why universities are so left-wing. My thoughts are that it's the only way... Bad ideas can only really survive as theories and assumptions, right? As long as they're claimed to be unproven or we haven't done it yet or we didn't do it right, then they always will have a claim to why they should be used or practiced. But in the real world, right, where I like to live, when you have a theory about something, you try it out in reality and you just show the results. Hey, look, this is my results. I train like this. Look, at this is the muscles I got. You train like that. Look, you don't have no muscles. So my my training method is better than your training method. And then everyone will adopt accordingly. But that's not what the case happens in university. But I digress. I'm rambling. Let's get into the video. Biologists explain how organisms adapt to their physical environment. But ideologues also adapt to their social environment. The most fundamental fact about the ideals of the political left is that they do not work. Therefore, we should not be surprised to find the left concentrated in institutions where ideas do not have to work in order to survive. The academic world is the natural habitat of half-baked ideas. I, I, com I completely agree. Oh, and before I want to throw in a quick point here is that in like lefties or people in like even in politics, right? They want to throw the, oh, we haven't tried it yet. We haven't tried it yet. We haven't tried it yet. And then when they do try it and it doesn't work out the way they thought it was supposed to work out, they never talk about it. They never acknowledge that they were wrong about uh, said policy, said theory. Defund the police, defund the police. Anyone remember that? Oh, crimes, crimes won't increase just because we uh, take funding away from the police. Less body, less bodies on the sitting on, on the ground. Boom, more crime happened. You emboldened criminals. Crime rates skyrocketed by 20%. Oh, it also happened in red states, Kenny, but you, Democrat, blue states, historically always been top, top 10, top five crime rates. Chicago being number one. Or unless I'm wrong, I might be wrong about Chicago, but I'm pretty sure another blue state beat it. And these are the ideas that I'm talking about. Like, I don't like to trust theories where they haven't been proven in the real world. I don't know, bro. I just think these people, they they want the vision to be in like to be right so bad that no matter what they see in reality, they're like, no, it's just a blip in the system. It's just a blip. It will work. It'll work. It'll work. I don't know it will work. And that's how the left uh, trot down their path and their theories. And this is why they, they're so big on trying to shove it down our throats. But I digress. Except for those fields in which there are decisive tests, such as science, mathematics, engineering, medicine, and athletics. And also, I want, I guess I want to throw in another thing, is that uh, in college, there's a lot of majors in college. And my, my opinion is they should be, they should be radically cut out. Because I think this is why uh, universities got so bloated with all these degrees, with all these departments. In all these fields, in their differing ways, there comes a time when you must either put up or shut up. Mm -hmm. It should not be surprising that all of these fields are notable exceptions to the complete domination of the left on campuses across the country. In the humanities, for example, the test of deconstructionism is not whether it can produce any tangible results, but whether it remains in vogue. So long as it does, professors skilled in its verbal sleight of hand can expect to continue to receive six-figure salaries. You might think that the collapse of communism throughout Eastern Europe would be considered a decisive failure for Marxism, but academic Marxists in America are utterly undaunted. Their paychecks and their tenure are unaffected. Their theories continue to flourish in the classrooms, and their journals continue to litter the library shelves. Socialism in general has a record of failure so blatant that only an intellectual could ignore or evade it. Even countries that were once more prosperous than their neighbors have found themselves much poorer than their neighbors after just one generation of socialistic policies. And, and that's, that's results. Like, I'm results-driven. If you're telling me, oh, socialism is the better system, socialism is the better, free health care, free health care, but it'll lead us as a net negative, we shouldn't try the idea. That's what makes me a conservative. I don't try out the ideas just because, oh, it's a new thing. No, it has to have something tangible, something uh, result, like some result that make it worth trying. And if it's already been proven that it makes us a weaker economic system, why would you want to adopt it? Because you want free health care? 
So you get free health care, but everyone becomes poor. That's a good trade off to you. That sounds like a good trade off to anybody. Any takers? Let me know in the comment section. I don't think that's a good trade off. I think we should stay, keep our, our capitalistic uh, system and make it more capitalistic, make, make it more free market. Because right now we're trying to be a mixed economy and we're seeing what's going on right now. You can't play both. You can't chase two rabbits. We got to pick one. That's just my take. Let me know yours in the comment section. Whether these neighboring countries were Ghana and the Ivory Coast or Burma and Thailand, it has been the same story around the world. Nor is economic failure the worst of it. The millions slaughtered by Stalin, Mao, and Pol Pot for political reasons are an even grimmer reality. Hmm. People who live and work in a world where there is a business bottom line, an athletic scoreboard, a military battlefield, or life and death surgery may find it hard to fully appreciate the difference between that kind of world and one in which the only decisive test is whether your colleagues like what you are saying. Hmm. Academia is only one of the places where wholly subjective criteria rule, and where leftists predominate. Endowed institutions, such as foundations and museums, likewise often face no test other than what like-minded people find exciting, and what enables those who run these institutions to get the heady feeling that they are making a difference. Mm. And the same, and they're influencing us, our children, with these unproven ideas. This is one of the reasons why I'm so strongly against CRT, because it's the same. It's the same bullcrap. It sounds nice, all this stuff. Oh my God, you're powerless, Kenny. You're black. You don't know. You don't know. You can do nothing for yourself. We have to help you. We have to save you. And you're like, no, you don't. Get out of my way. You're in my way. This is why I, I can't do anything. Because you're in here thinking you need to help me when you don't need to help me. You just need to make sure we're playing by the same rules and that's it. You don't need to give me no special treatment, no special benefits. Don't give me any uh, handicaps or nothing. That's it. That's all I'm That's all I'm worried about. If you can make sure we're playing by the same rules, well, I'm Gucci. I can handle everything else myself. Just get out of my way. But these people just want to feel needed. That's what it is. That's why I'm saying, look, let most I this is just my take. This is just my opinion. But I believe most white liberals, they have a savior complex. First goal for any of my anyone in the sound of my voice, try to save a thousand dollars. Because you know most Americans don't have a thousand dollars emergency fund in their bank account right now. However it takes, if it's just fifty dollars every two weeks, you, you commit to fifty dollars every two weeks, a hundred dollars a month, and in ten months you'll have a thousand bucks. You're already doing better than most Americans currently small goals and you'll get a big result it's just that simple but hey i'm rambling on too long let's get back same is true of cultural institutions supported involuntarily by the taxpayers such as the smithsonian or the national endowments for the arts and the humanities taxpayer supported public radio and television are similarly insulated from reality wow. and similarly dominated by the left not only in the United States, but in other countries as well. And you see why people like who, who vote Republican, you see why people vote Republican? They want to cut taxes so we don't fund bad ideas, these farms of bad ideas. And if you can say, oh, they, they haven't been tried, it hasn't been tried, okay, try them. Do you a little small sample size? I heard California's about to try universal base uh, income for transgender people. Let's see how that works out. But they don't know how to trace the negative outcomes of their bad policies. But yeah, I digress. Well, all the nostrums of the left that have brought hunger to millions in countries which used to have surplus food to export, all the pretty words and ugly realities that have caused millions more to flee the lands of their birth. Sorry, I, I had to put that point out. That's what I, I, I've made to this point before. Uh, world of words and world of reality, which where where you live, what you value, because like he said, these communists will give you pretty words. Yeah, everyone can live in mansions. Everybody. And then the reality hits. Oh, every, the only way everyone can have equality, equal living standards is if, if all of you guys are poor. And I'm rich because I'm the president of the communist regime. These nostrums live on in public television. Much like old classic movies with familiar lines that the audience of aficionados can recite along with the characters on the screen. 
These endowed and insulated institutions, often full of contempt for the values of American society and Western civilization, mm -hmm. are not the only bastions of the left counterculture. So are Hollywood and Broadway. Although showbiz faces the financial need to get an audience, the truth of what they portray is hardly crucial. If they can make it punchy and sexy, then those who complain about historical inaccuracies and ideological bias can be dismissed as irrelevant pedants. Mm. Why are leftists able to crowd out other kinds of people from these places? Because those who are willing to subject themselves to the test of reality, whether as a businessman in the marketplace or as a surgeon in an operating room, have many other places in which to work and live. They do not need special sheltered niches in which to hide and to cherish their precious notions. And they always complain that, oh, we people are going to live in uh, echo chambers. Now you see why lefties like censorship. Because if you cancel out ideas you don't like, you never have to go out and prove your ideas. You sit there and say, they, they're just trying to make social media like academia, a bubble. And this is why they're so mad at Elon Musk. Now I understand. Before I couldn't logically understand, I'm like, yo, are you just that in your feelings? But it's a survival tactic. What you think about the video? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.